Welcome, fellow pilgrims, to our sacred journey on this St. Therese of Lisieux YouTube video today. I'm Priscilla, and I invite you to join me on an extraordinary pilgrimage where we explore the rich traditions and spiritual treasures of the Catholic faith. In this sacred space, we delve into the depths of devotion, faith, and the power of prayer with a special focus on the inspiring St. Therese of Lisieux. This channel is all about teaching you about the holy saints so that you can deepen your faith. I also help you plan your Catholic pilgrimages to visit these incredible saints and bring your faith to the next level, so make sure to check out the links in the description for help with cheap flights, car rentals, travel insurance, and more. This channel is about fostering a deeper understanding of our faith, embracing the teachings of Christ, and discovering the beauty of Catholic traditions. Today, we'll explore the exciting graces contained within St. Therese of Lysia and her teachings and apply her lessons to our everyday lives. Together, we'll cultivate a space of spiritual growth where we can learn from one another, uplift each other, and find solace in St. Therese of Lysia and our shared Catholic heritage. So, whether you're a seasoned devotee or just beginning your journey of faith, this channel is for you. Let's unite as a community of prayerful souls embarking on this divine pilgrimage of the heart. Join me on this journey today as we learn about St. Therese of Lysia, where prayer becomes a transformative force and our souls find sanctuary. Take a moment now to subscribe to our channel because we have more awesome videos coming up and hit the notification bell to be a part of our sacred journey. Let's get started. Come and explore the beautiful spirit spirituality of St. Therese of Lysia, the beloved Catholic saint known as the Little Flower. In this extensive blog post, we'll dive into the inspiring life and faith of St. Therese of Lysia. You'll discover why this young Carmelite nun from France who died at only 24 years old still captivates millions worldwide today. Learn all about St. Therese's little way of holiness, her miraculous intercession from heaven, the significance of roses in her story, and how to visit the relics and sites of this luminous saint in Lycia. Whether you are new to her teachings or already devoted, this post will help deepen your connection to St. Therese of Lycia. When was St. Therese of Lycia born and when did she die? St. Therese of Lycia was born Marie Francoise Therese Martin on January 2, 1873 in Lincoln, France. She was the youngest of nine children born to Louis and Sally Martin. Five of the Martin and daughters became nuns, showing just how devout this family was. Therese's mother tragically died from breast cancer when Therese was only four years old. After her mother's passing, Therese became very attached to her older sister Pauline who became like a second mother to her. Therese was a very sensitive child who suffered from nervous tremors, but she was also very pious from a young age. By the time she was 11, Therese expressed her desire to enter the Carmelite monastery. At 15, she received special permission to join her older sisters in the convent at Lycia. On entering the monastery, Therese took the name Sister Therese of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face. As a quiet, humble sister, she lived in the convent attending to her religious duties, meditating, and praying for souls. In the last years of her life, she suffered greatly from tuberculosis and passed away on September 30, 1897 at the young age of 24. What order did St. Therese of Lycia belong to? St. Therese became a nun in the Carmelite order at the monastery in Lycia, France when she was only 15. The Carmelite order is devoted to contemplative prayer, simple living, and making sacrifices for the salvation of humanity. The nuns typically live cloistered lives, leaving the monastery only for urgent necessities like medical care. St. Therese lived as a Carmelite nun from 1888 until her death in 1897. She took the religious name Sister Therese of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face upon joining the Lycia convent. The Carmelites seek to grow in holiness and devotion to Christ through a regimen of silence, manual labor, prayer, and sacrifice. Their spirituality emphasizes detachment from worldly possessions and ambitions. St. Therese embraced this simple, modest lifestyle during her years as a nun. What is St. Therese of Lycia the patron saint of? St. Therese of Lycia is the patron saint of several causes, primarily missionaries, florists, aviators, and people suffering from AIDS. She is the patron saint of missionaries because of her fervent prayer and devotion to priests and the salvation of souls across the globe. Although Therese never served as a missionary herself, she prayed ceaselessly for missionaries to succeed in spreading the gospel. Florists have adopted Saint Therese as their patron because of the many miracles involving roses attributed to her intercession. Therese promised to send down a shower of roses after her death, and devotees have reported receiving roses as a sign of her spiritual presence. Aviators also look to Saint Therese for guidance as their patron saint, although she died long before airplanes were invented. Some stories tell of her benevolent spiritual presence miraculously guiding pilots through dangerous situations. Finally, St. Therese is the patron saint of people impacted by HIV, IDS. As someone who suffered greatly from disease, Therese serves as a model of hope and resilience for those managing serious illness. What were some key events in the life of St. Therese?
centuries of Lycia. Some significant events that shaped St. Teresa's spiritual life include the early death of her mother when she was only four years old led to an intense attachment to her older sister Pauline, her Christmas conversion at age 13 when she shed her childhood sensitivity and embraced the radical call of faith, entering the Carmelite monastery at 15, beginning her religious life as a contemplative nun, her struggle in 1895 when her faith was tested by spiritual dryness, her revival with complete trust in God's mercy, her miraculous healing from a serious illness through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, being elected assistant novice mistress despite her young age, offering guidance to new nuns, the onset of her final illness, severe tuberculosis, which she bore with grace and joy, her death at only 24 years old on September 30, 1897, after much physical suffering. These impactful moments reveal her unwavering devotion to Christ even amidst difficulties like doubt, illness, and the turbulence of youth. What is St. Therese of Lycia best known for? St. Therese of Lycia is best known for her spiritual memoir The Story of a Soul which introduced her little way approach to holiness. The core of her spirituality is doing even mundane tasks with great love out of devotion to God. Therese described her little way as her personal, childlike spirituality of simplicity and trust. She emphasized practicing small acts of love in each moment, instead of worrying about making grand gestures. Therese wrote that she wished to remain small and unnoticed, like a child nestled into its father's arms. The little way appealed to Catholics worldwide who struggle to find holiness in everyday life. Therese demonstrated how small sacrifices born out of love have great value to God. She inspired millions to cultivate devotion through their modest daily activities. Ultimately, Therese is remembered for making sanctity feel accessible to ordinary Catholics. She assured people they could grow closer to God through little acts, intentions, and prayers woven into each day. What miracles are attributed to St. Therese of Lycia? Numerous miraculous cures and interventions have been attributed to St. Teresa's intercession in heaven. She said during her lifetime, after my death, I will let fall a shower of roses. I will spend my heaven doing good upon earth. Since her passing, believers worldwide have reported experiencing roses as a sign of her spiritual presence. Some examples of miracles associated with Therese include an Ohio boy run over by a wagon had his crushed leg healed through Therese's intercession. A nun with tuberculosis was suddenly cured after praying novenas to Therese. Therese's father had eye problems healed after praying for her help. A pilot whose plane ran out of fuel landed safely after calling on Therese. Severely ill children made sudden full recoveries after their families prayed to the saint. Paralyzed individuals have regained the ability to walk through her intercession. These miraculous interventions were critical in the Catholic Church's decision to canonize Therese as an official saint and name her a doctor of the church. To this day, thousands continue to report miraculous healings and aid from St. Therese of Lycia. Where can you go to see relics of St. Therese of Lycia? The primary relics of St. Therese are housed at the Carmelite convent in Lycia, France where she lived as a nun. Visitors can see her relics at the Chapelle St. Therese and the Basilica of St. Therese, located next to the convent. Some key sites associated with Therese and Lycia include the Crypt Chapel, where her relics rest and mass is celebrated, the Basilica, which contains her relics and grave, the Carmelite Convent and St. Therese Museum displaying her artifacts, Les Buissonnets, Therese's restored childhood home, the cathedral where she took her first communion, Sally's house, the residence of Therese's mother. Making a pilgrimage to Lycia is the best way to connect with St. Therese and follow in her footsteps. Beyond Lycia, other French churches have small relics like her hair, clothing, letters, or pieces of her casket. These can be found at various Carmelite convents and sites like the Notre Dame Basilica in Paris. Taking a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Therese of Lycia is a wonderful way to deepen your faith. Did you know that meditating on the Gospel and Cross of Christ for even a few minutes a day is also so good for your spiritual health? Prayer is such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Also, meditating on the Gospel for at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the Gospel? I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. Let's take a moment to think about the Gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a Savior because of this. Romans 3.23 Because of this, God sent His one and only Son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi 3-6 God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. 
He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17:11. For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9:22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments, to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small? Have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to? Have you ever desired something that your friend or neighbor had that didn't belong to you? To be honest, it's easy to break these laws because our nature is inclined to sin. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 to 8 minus 9 Because God loves us so much, in Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush Jesus, when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death, and because he rose from the dead, he promises to raise us from the dead after we die too. This is the glorious gospel. The next step after a person has received the gospel is to go to RCIA at your local Catholic church. You can search for the nearest church on Google and call them to see when the next classes start. If they don't start for some months, you can still meet with the director and get some books to read to tie you over before it starts. I will be praying for you about all of this. This is the road to eternal life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos about inspiring saints. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video. Make sure to check out the links below in the description so you can grab your St. Therese of Lysia Catholic t-shirt and be a part of our We Are Saintly Catholic community by signing up for our email list and joining us on Patreon. I give you free saint printables each month, a free We Are Saintly shirt each year, shoutouts, and more in Patreon as a special thank you for being a part of this amazing Catholic community. Are you considering taking a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Therese of Lysia. I've traveled to lots of places, and I'm well versed in the things you may need along the way, so I've compiled a list of links in the description below where you can find cheap flights, car rentals, destination packages, and more. Save this video so you have those links handy and visit our blog to learn about more holy saints that will ignite your faith. I sincerely hope that thinking about and learning about St. Therese of Lysia has brought you a sense of comfort and tranquility. If you found this video to be beneficial, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel. Always remember to keep the faith and believe in the power of prayer. May God bless you and provide you with guidance on your journey. Until we meet again, take care of yourself and stay safe.